I am a, from the Milwaukee Area Labor Council. We are a little different in that we are direct employees of the Milwaukee Area Labor Council as opposed to being direct employees of the United Way. Uh, we are funded by the United Way of Greater Milwaukee and Waukesha County, which is um, a new title for us because I don't know if you've heard, but this past fall there was a merger between the United Way of Greater Milwaukee and the United Way of Waukesha County, so now we are the United Way of Greater Milwaukee and Waukesha County. I grew up in the UAW as a member of UAW Local 438 and am currently a member of AFSCME Local 1954. Some of the activities around the Milwaukee area, we borrowed the idea of the blanket drive from our brothers and sisters here in Green Bay. So we have had our second annual blanket drive this year. Um, we do not do as well as the brothers and sisters in Green Bay. Um, this past year, we, for our second year, we did collect 250 blankets, which was up um, from 150 blankets our first year. This year, we also had a re increase in 10 different organizations wanting to receive blankets. So we were at 25 agencies looking for blankets this year as opposed to 15 last year. So though we were up in blankets, we were still able to distribute only about the same amount to each agency. So um, as we continue to grow this blanket drive, we hope that that will continue to grow as well, the number that come in, because there obviously is a need in the community for that. Um, we also have our health and hygiene drive. This year, we'll be working with approximately 30 different agencies who will be looking for health and hygiene products. It's our 26th annual drive in the Greater Milwaukee area. We will again, this year we will be doing it with uh, Waukesha County as well. So that, like, that hygiene drive begins April 6th and runs through June 5th. And then we will distribute everything on June 18th. So you have some opportunity in that between the 5th and the 18th to join us at the Labor Council to help sort and divide up all the different activity, the different items that we collect. It is a fun time sorting soap from shampoo, from conditioner with all those little bottles. Oh, it's so much fun, trust me. <laughs> so please come and join us. Plan your vacation in Milwaukee during that time. <laughs> Stay for summer fest. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, the other thing we, the other big activity we do is our St. Ben's meal program. St. Ben's offers a meal program um, seven days a week. Uh, 52 weeks a year, and one Sunday in June, usually the last Sunday in June, um, Labor sponsors that meal at St. Ben's, and it's the only cookout that they have. They actually go and cook rocks outside on the grill for the folks there. It's something they look forward to. We'll be doing that again this year, the last Sunday in June. Um, my co-worker, Mike Balistrieri, who could not be here this week, is also very involved with the Union's Veterans Committee in the Milwaukee area and does a lot of work around there. Um, in December, at our holiday party, the last couple of years, we've been doing combining our holiday party with a food drive for Pathfinders. Pathfinders is one of the many agencies in the area that works with runaway and throwaway youth in our community. Um, we give them the food. We ask people to bring some food with them to the holiday party. So the last couple of years, we've been able to provide them with enough food to get them through the holidays and through January. So we've done a really good job. They're very appreciative of that. Um, also, uh, we work real closely with United Way. Um, and now we'll be working in a four-county area of Milwaukee, Ozaki, Washington, and Waukesha counties. Our United Way has done very well the past 10 years, meeting their goal every year. And it'll be an increased goal this year with uh, the fact that we're merging together with our brothers and sisters in Waukesha County. One of the other things we do through United Way in Milwaukee is the Reader Tutor Mentor Program. Um, you know, I have a great job. I get to do a lot of different things, and some of the fun things I get to do is go out and read to some of our preschool kids in the area. And I also get to tutor, um, help tutor with a kindergarten class, um, and I get to be a mentor through Big Brothers Big Sisters. So I'm really proud of that activity. Um, it's one of those things that keeps you going. Nothing like a bunch of kids cheering you on when you walk in the door to get your week started. So I choose to do that first thing Monday morning. Because it really makes you, and that never happens at the other places I go. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> that to me. So that's pretty cool. Um, we will be doing Labor Fest again this year on Labor Day at the Summerfest grounds. It's a huge Labor Festival. It is free. 
And um, I'm a summer fresh clown, but you have to buy the food and beer yourself. But that'll be first with our big parade, and then followed with the festivities on the summer fest grounds. Um, and then again, one of the other things that I'm very involved in is the whole issue of human trafficking, both sex and labor trafficking, working with the Human Trafficking Task Force of Greater Milwaukee. And this year, um, UMOS, which is one of the agencies in our community, the United Migrant Opportunity Services, received a $300,000 grant from the federal government to really look at labor trafficking in our community. Um, it has been in the rise in the greater Milwaukee area. Um, it's a lot of uh, domestic work that's happening right now where people are believe they have a job with going out and cleaning homes and then it comes to the end of the week and they put in their 40 hours and they're only getting paid for anywhere from 12 to 20 with no place to go that they are aware of no place to go and, and um, file a complaint about that. Some of it is that English may not be their first language, and they're afraid uh, to report these things. Um, so we're finding that to be a big problem in the greater Milwaukee area. So UMOS has got this grant from the federal government to look into this to find out what's happening. So we'll be working really closely with them on that particular part of labor, tra labor trafficking in the Milwaukee area. Um, I've told you all a lot about what's happening with sex trafficking in Wisconsin and what you might not know is that of all the 72 counties in Wisconsin, every county has had a complaint about sex trafficking in the state of Wisconsin. It's not just in Milwaukee. It's becoming wider spread in more rural communities. Um, you may know about the dancing places that happen in northern Wisconsin where you can go down the street and see all these different clubs that offer dancing. Well, those dancers tend to be trafficked from a different part of the state. There's a big little cycle that happens between Milwaukee and Sheboygan and Wausau and Stevens Point and Madison. Um, the girls are picked up in one area and moved to the other to dance against their will and that dancing leads to other things. So that little trafficking area happens a lot in our state as well as um, the way that they pick up girls is very different. We tend to think of trafficking as somebody coming up in the car grabbing the young girl, throwing it in the car, and running off with that girl, but that's not how it happens anymore. It happens when some young girl goes on to some internet site, or maybe Facebook or Twitter, and talks about uh, she's not happy at home, and somebody will see that, a trafficker will ask to meet her at a mall somewhere, or some gathering place, will tell her how pretty she is, and how he wouldn't mistreat her, and encourages her to run away. Most of the young ladies that are trafficked are runaways. They're not kidnapped. They run away to be with this, their new boyfriend who may treat them well for maybe a month or so and then begins to ask them to do favors for him because he may owe a buddy of his some money and the buddy will forget the debt if she sleeps with him. And such begins her life as being trafficked in our community. First time she says no is the first time she's beaten. She will become pregnant. He will keep the child so that she has to stay with him in order to see her child. It's all about a mind game. I've told this to other groups. Um, what the traffickers say is, uh, I will clean it up, um, but they say if I can screw with her mind, you can screw with her body. And that's how they get these young people. So it really is, um, Wisconsin is right up there in the top three. Some, Depends on who you listen to. We're either number one, number two, or number three in the area of trafficking. But we, the more we educate ourselves, the more we know about it, um, the better chance we have of cleaning up our state and eradicating human trafficking in our lifetime. And that's the goal of the Human Trafficking Task Force of Greater Milwaukee. They just did a, a report that came out of Nevada of all the young women who are working the street, not those who have those fancy jobs in the entertainment industry that you hear about, but the Young ladies working the street, 70% um, of them have some kind of tie back to Wisconsin. So it's a big issue here in our state. We need to be aware of it. We need to be looking for it, watching for it, to make sure that our kids are safe. Um, that's why we need to do those reader, tutor, mentor programs. The other thing is, putting my plug here for you to get out there and work with our young people in our community, because the best way to make sure no one's trafficked is to make sure they have a good mentor, someone who lets them know that they are worthwhile, they are worth something, they are positive, and do that for a, another young person, and you have just saved a 
another person in our community. And that's the good news of all this. We can really make an impact just by one-on-one -on -one contact